Did you know that foreign investors who buy real estate in Dubai have to pay no taxes on their profits? And that while the luxury market there is one of the priciest in the world, the average real estate prices are a quarter of what they are in London? These are just some of the reasons why so many people are pouring money into Dubai real estate. But there are also potential negatives, especially for the citizens of Dubai, who are seeing their rental rates skyrocket and are sometimes being illegally forced out of their homes so landlords can charge higher rent to a new tenant. Let's take a look at the economics behind Dubai's real estate industry and why some experts think it will soon be the most successful and prosperous city on the planet. What started out as a simple fishing village has grown in leaps and bounds in the past few decades, and a big part of that has been Dubai's rapid growth in its real estate economy. But Dubai isn't content to stop there. They're determined to take the last 30 years of incredible growth and build on it, literally and figuratively. They recently released their Dubai 2040 Urban Master Plan, which sets out goals for the next 17 years, particularly when it comes to housing and real estate. Among these stated goals are the development of five new urban centers and 1.7 billion square feet of land being dedicated to economic and industrial activities. They're also looking to have an integrated housing plan that offers high standards of living for all its citizens for the next 20 years. They also want the population to grow by nearly 6 million people and want at least 55% of them to live within 800 meters of a public transport station by connecting its five primary urban areas by sustainable corridors. This is part of their goal to make Dubai a so-called 20-minute city. That means that ideally, citizens are no more than 20 minutes away from their intended destination in the city, by foot or by bike, no matter where they start from. There's also a goal of establishing what they're calling a comprehensive and flexible law to promote and grow sustainability in new buildings. And that's on top of their already impressive sustainability standards for new construction. They're also looking to more than double their recreational and green areas in the city and lengthen their public beach space by 400%. A big part of the real estate success in Dubai for the last 20 years was the 2002 declaration by the ruler of Dubai, His Royal Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, that freehold rights would be established for foreign citizens. Basically, it meant non-nationals could purchase property, and this was huge for the local economy. At first, Iranian investors seized on the opportunity and invested a reported $200 billion in Dubai in the early 2000s. This trend continued with other foreign investments, peaking briefly in 2008 before the global economy suffered from the housing bubble bursting in the US. But a mere four years later, Dubai real estate was booming again, and it has continued doing so in the years since. The freehold era has seen not only increased investment in housing in general, but the blossoming of an age of skyscrapers in Dubai. The most notable is the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world at 2,717 feet. But beyond that, it has 251 buildings tall enough for the skyscraper designation, making it fourth in the world in that regard. While there are certainly cultural and logistical reasons why people are buying property in Dubai, a big component is the taxation factor. The real estate market isn't subjected to capital gains taxes or income taxes. This even extends to foreign investors who don't have to pay any capital gains tax on their Dubai real estate purchases. It's one of only a few places in the world with this type of taxation freedom. And while there are a few taxes levied at the beginning of the process, like registration fees and a property transaction fee when you purchase real estate in Dubai, there are then no taxes that recur year after year. As such, investing in property in Dubai is a much more affordable purchase than similar real estate in other cities. Even if you buy property and rent it out, you're exempt from having to pay rental and revenue tax. You know what also is free of taxation? Subscribing to our channel, just saying. The cost of buying real estate in Dubai has admittedly soared in the last couple of years. This has caused skepticism for some buyers who wonder if it's a bubble. But there are a few important things to remember. For starters, much of this talk has happened in the COVID and post-COVID era. And despite the UAE doing a stellar job of handling the pandemic, both logistically and economically, it still had a dip like the rest of the world. So that meant prices in Dubai real estate dipped too. But because it's such a vibrant market, prices have jumped back up in a huge way. This is especially true with the luxury market. 
But as Simon Baker, managing director at Dubai real estate shop House & House, pointed out, that leap is potentially misleading. In an interview, he said that the jump in prices is not as steep when you take into account a longer time period. He also pointed out that the biggest jumps in real estate prices have been in the luxury market and that the average price of a real estate purchase in Dubai is actually quite competitive. Baker estimated the average price of buying in London at the moment is about £3,000 per square foot, and yet it's about £400 per square foot in Dubai. So it's a lot easier for investors to pick up property in Dubai and still manage to make decent returns of 7 or 8%. Another big component of why investors are so drawn to Dubai is that it's so friendly to foreign nationals and tourists. It's an incredibly cosmopolitan city with a ton of diversity, and while it has a connection to many of the cultural and historical aspects that have long driven the area, it also doesn't follow some of the more strict rules and the formalities that you'll find in most Middle Eastern nations. But it does this while still maintaining its Middle Eastern and Muslim-centric tradition. As such, it's appealing to foreigners from both the Western world as well as from other areas of the region. A great example of this is in its architecture. Many of the newest buildings in Dubai are flashy, cosmopolitan, and full of touches of capitalistic and Western flair. Yet, they also have design elements and ornamental flourishes that tie back to buildings from traditional Middle Eastern states. As part of the 2040 plan, Dubai also plans for a 134% increase in space for tourism activities, as well as hospitality. So, clearly there's a strong focus on making it an appealing place for people from all corners of the globe. And with that focus on appealing to foreigners, have been increased incentives to set up businesses in Dubai. They've set up a system that's quite favorable to foreign workers and investors. For example, they have a golden visa offered to investors, as well as students, professionals, and entrepreneurs, that's available for five or 10 year spans. They also have short-term freelance visas that are easy to apply for and get, and there are relatively few hoops to jump through. They also have a retirement residency visa that can be purchased by investing a certain amount into the country. This is for high net worth individuals, but it's another option for investors. Simply put, they want people to live, invest, and generally spend money in Dubai. Dubai's excellent handling of the COVID-19 pandemic has helped it in myriad ways. For starters, it was a sign that it's a well-run city that prioritizes the health of its citizens, while not succumbing to some of the overreach experienced in some other countries. It also meant that it weathered the economic storm much better than many other cities globally. As such, it's remained an appealing place to live with no reduction in services and quality of life in the aftermath of the pandemic. Dubai's success, and the UAE as a whole, was due to a number of factors. They launched a national home testing program, which included free testing, and when the vaccine arrived, they helped arrange for home vaccinations for those who needed it. They also set up support programs to help citizens with the psychological burden of the pandemic. And while local government played a big role, there were cultural factors as well. The city's citizenry was very focused on the good of those around them and this was manifested by things ranging from strict adherence to the safety measures requested by the government to an increase in volunteerism. There's also been a strong focus on improving the safety and regulations involved in real estate deals. In the early days of the real estate boom, many of the properties in Dubai were purchased with handshake deals, and it was overall a much shadier system. But in 2007, they established the Real Estate Regulatory Authority, or RERA. Since then, the RERA has streamlined and regulated the process efficiently, encouraging more investments in real estate. Of course, even with the positive aspects of the property and real estate boom in Dubai, there are also some drawbacks. The prices for the average citizen in Dubai looking to simply live and rent there have gone up a fair amount in the last few years. And as Dubai has become more and more popular, it's increased in population and there have been issues with scarcity such as with taxis. Reportedly, it's a lot harder to simply get a taxi ride than it used to be. But perhaps as Dubai enacts many of the policies of its 2040 plan, many of these issues will be remedied. On the other side of the coin, there are also natives of the area who worry the city is growing too quickly and that most of the growth is driven by business. The concern is it could mean that Dubai loses much of its social and religious heritage. It's pretty wild that as recently as the 1970s, Dubai was a series of small settlements making up a fishing village, and now it's one of the top places to buy real estate in the world. 
Have any comments about the economics of Dubai real estate or want to go in on an investment property there with me? Pop them in the comments section.